you're one video away from changing your entire career direction, trajectory, whatever it is. Like, and like, that's why quality is so important. The difference between someone who's good and great is someone who takes action. So a podcast, why do you want to do a podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Um, okay. So my whole thing is do more with less, which thank you, by the way, because you are the guy who helped me come up with this. So I'm glad you're the first official podcast person. Um, Let's go. It's weird talking right now because like, I'm talking like almost, like not all the way, but like 20% to the camera, not to you. And it's like, I don't want to feel mm. that way at all. And I think that's, yeah. that's why I want to do a podcast this way because this feels the least scripted, the least mm. like you're actually being recorded it feels, and it's obviously like there's no barrier to entry. Um, mm -hmm. So to answer your question, why I want to do a podcast in general, that's why I want to do a podcast this way. Um, Cause there's anyone can do it. I can FaceTime anybody, but to answer your question, why I want to do a podcast in general, I feel like I have so many good conversations with people like yourself. Ours, I think are some of the best. Um, and I have a lot of these types of conversations where if it were me four or five years ago, I would kill to just listen to, to this stuff because it's not that we know everything, but I mean, we know a lot more than we did X, Y, Z five, six years ago. And I think that people could benefit a lot from hearing this stuff. And I am, I don't know. I like to think of myself as like the opposite of a gatekeeper. Like I want to yeah. spread as much information about what I know as possible, because if, you, if I could do it, then you also knowing how to do it doesn't affect my success. Like that's the abundance mindset. And yeah. like, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just think, Hey, like I know this, why not, why not share it? And it'll only, I saw this video, uh, and I might've said this to you before. I saw this video. It was Matty Hapoya. Um, if you know that guy and, um, yep. he's, this was like my favorite thing. He was like, what benefit? He was like, say it with me. Like what benefits you benefits me and what benefits me benefits you. And I was like, damn, like that is such a great way to put it. It's like anything you do, anything you put out into the world, any amount of like helping other people or information that you can offer, it's never going to take away from you. It's only going to help you. Um, so that's yeah. why I wanted to do this. And I want to do it this way so I could do actually like more, like just, just have conversations yeah. with people. There's no barrier to entry. Who really cares about the audio? It's like, as long as you can hear us. Hopefully this is working this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, I mean, it's not, it's not garbage like audio either. Like we're, we're recording through Macs and AirPods and like, like the stuff has gotten like so much better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I think that's also why you and I clicked right away is like, we both have this abundant abundance mindset where like, we just like, we're an open book. Like, like we're not afraid to ask someone how they did something just because we don't want to like step on their toes or something like, and, and the, the beautiful thing is too, is like, um, you're doing a lot of stuff that I've never done or like, don't know how to do and vice versa. And it's like, it's been so fun to just be like, yo, how did you do this? Or like, how did you come up with this idea? Or like when we bounce ideas back and forth, we're like, okay, I can tackle this. I can tackle that. And like, it's just been a really cool relationship. And I feel like I've grown so much just like on the creative side, let alone just like, you know, like obviously like being like a friend and all that, like it's been really cool. So yeah, dude, I, and it was, most definitely. Dude, what was so wild, like, do you remember that first DM I sent you and you're like, I was like, I was like, Hey, like I heard, I saw you're like working on YouTube stuff and like, and then I was like, I need someone to hold me accountable for YouTube stuff. And you were like, dude, I was just about to message you. And I'm like, I nah, swear I was. Crazy. Yeah. I, crazy. I swear. Cause like I was reaching out to other people in Chicago and like you yeah. were literally on my, like I have a list, like I have lists for everything. And I had like a creative a hit, cre hit list, a creative, <laughs> to, creatives to hit list. And, uh, you were on Love the list. That. And like, I was like, oh yeah, I really got to hit up this guy Colton. And then you DM me, I was like, sweet. But like, mm -hmm. I think what's crazy is like going off that, it's like at the time, like, um, obviously like you and I are like less apprehensive about this, but like, I think a lot of people would be apprehensive about it. It's like, I don't know, like I'll make a, I just made a tutorial reel that got a lot of views because of John Patrick. Um, cause he has like mm -hmm. more of a following from doing the same thing actually. And I get all these follows and I'm like, 
I wonder what percentage of these people would love to like ask me questions who are just kind of afraid to ask. And it's like, mm. I wish that wasn't how it is. Like, I wish people would just be like, Hey, how do you do yeah. this? It's like, th- there's like, a, there's for sure a stigma about like, Oh, I don't want to bother him or, Oh, he's probably busy. Or it's like, yeah. I am busy, but it's like, yeah. I do want to like be a resource. Like that's like the whole point here. Yeah. 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 This that dude, that's crazy. I literally got such the best DM this morning from a kid. Uh, uh, I think his, his name is Brett, I believe. And basically, uh, over the past couple months, he's just been like sending me videos asking for feedback. And so, I was, and like, and so I was just like, kind of like, uh, like kind of giving him, you know, kind of cliff notes on, on each video, like, you know, the great, the, the good things and the things that could be improved. And then I also was just urging him, I'm like, bro, like you want to take your videos to the next level, get into After Effects. Like, just like, just do it. Like I told him like how it took me over six months like i had after effects on my computer for like over six months and never opened it because i was just terrified and i was (laughs) like dude like i was like i was like i was in that exact same place you just got to do it and this morning he sent me a dm and said thanks to your uh feedback and your presets i just got a bunch of bookings at prism to shoot and i'm learning and i'm learning after effects right now and i was like dude that is exactly why Like I do this, like that's like so fucking awesome that you were able to take everything that we had talked about, apply it, take action on it. And then like now it's translating to real life career changes for him. And like, like the, I told him, I told him cause like he was like just saying thank you for, you know, like helping me. And I was like, you you were the one that took action the difference between someone who's good and great is someone who takes action and mm. 90 99 percent of the people that reach out or don't reach out are like they're not asking for feedback you i was know? gonna say reaching like, out is the first action you got to take yeah and, and and like if you're asking for feedback that probably means like that you can handle it or that you're open to whatever comes afterwards and and i would say like 99 percent of people are not even willing to send someone their work and ask for feedback yeah so, let alone uh, like, like I had to give take his, the feedback and yeah, then, like give, like go off of it and like take action based on the feedback yeah exactly yeah so uh yeah that's what i told him i was like dude like you are on the right path by just applying these things and moving forward and taking action. Like that's, that's something that slowed me down a lot in the beginning is I would like reach out to people and then they would give me advice and then I wouldn't do anything about it. Like right. I wouldn't do anything with that advice. I would just kind of just like continue to do whatever I was doing. And that resulted in like plateaus or just like, just being slow, just know. moving slow. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. And I yeah, think that's yeah. problem with, um, that's, that's honestly part of the problem. I think that maybe people face is like, I know, like they say, don't tell people your goals. And, um, I mm. think there is, I agree and disagree. Like, I think it is good to talk about your goals. Cause in one sense, it's like, you know, you hold yourself accountable, but then, you know, the way, the reason this applies to what we're talking about is cause like by, by talking to people about work and like reaching out and like asking them like, Oh, can you check this out? Can you review it? Or blah, blah, blah. It's like, you're sort of like getting high off of the ideas. Like, like same thing as like talking about your goals too much. It's like, you're giving yourself the the fulfillment of like doing the thing by talking about the thing Mm -hmm. that can be dangerous. Cause it's like, I don't know. You feel like you did things when really you didn't do anything. If you talk too much. So I actually, I actually have a, like a word for this and it's called like information fatigue. And Mm. like, that's, that's what I call it where like, so during these periods of time when I was just consuming incredible amounts of content through podcasts and YouTube tutorials and all that stuff, I spent so much energy and time consuming information and digesting information that by the time it was time for me to actually do the work, I didn't have any energy left. I didn't have any, like, there was no more dots for me to connect because I had just, like, put all my energy into all this information versus taking one piece of information. Exactly. And then taking action. You were going wide, and not then, deep. And then, and then, yeah, and then repeating that cycle versus 
you get this like super wide amount of information and there's so much that you don't know what direction to go. You have like, you know, there, and, and then like, let's say you do pick a direction. How do you know that's the right direction? How do you know that that, uh, like information that you're taking action on is actually going to get you to the next place in your career? And so it's just kind of, yeah, like you can't, I don't know, man. It, that's, it's, it's, it's such a hard place to be. Well, I think this is when like, you're like a problem. Not that... sure where to go, you know? Like, well, I think it's just because there's so much information. Like, I think that's like what it is. It's like, yeah, you, right, you don't, right. here's information so, overload. Like, to go off what you're saying here is like, um, I, I think I told you we spent, uh, me and like, my like intern guys for lack of a better term yeah uh spent like two days well we were at this cabin for like three days and we went like 48 hours no cell phones like zero internet and like it like not really to my surprise because i assumed this would happen but like immediately like you actually start using your brain again and it's like just by just by 48 hours like i can't even imagine like a full week or a month but like you start like because you're able to like tune out all this extra noise and and almost just like calm your brain down then you have like instead of like a million half thoughts or like quarter thoughts or even like less than that you have like one mm-hmm. actual thought and it's like wait i can like explore this one avenue here and go mm-hmm. deep instead of why stand on it yeah, yeah and like so what yeah. wound up happening is like Cause like I, I try to inspire these kids and like, I try to like do as much as I can for them. And this is a whole separate conversation, but like fact of the matter is I send yeah. them a lot of content on, on Instagram and it's like, I'm like, Oh, check this out. Check this out. Look how this guy did this. Look at the color here, the transition here. And it's like, dude, like mm-hmm. this is overload. And I'm realizing now that, you know, we go to this cabin and, uh, it's, we've been without a phone for 24 hours and it's like 11 p.m. We're about to go to bed. Like literally like the lights are like off and like we're sitting there just like talking and we're like, wait, like what if we did this? And then it was like, and then the other kid's like, yeah, what if we did this this way? And it's like, okay, cool. Then the story. And then we came up with just by bouncing ideas off each other like they did in the freaking old days. Yeah. We came up with a really, really <laughs> good story. And then we went and shot it the next day. Um, and it, it turned out pretty good other than the fucking VHS camera not dude it was a really weird glitch on this vhs camera but um we lost a clip we lost a shot that we needed and it's in the middle of other shots it's like it's we're like where did it go and like it was just weird but anyway um yeah not i think i think just like trying to come up with ideas literally from scratch literally just shut up turn your phone off sit with another person and Try, just see what you can come up with just by talking to them. Yeah. Or, uh, like something, something I'll do on purpose is I'll go long periods of time without watching other peers work. Yeah. So like I'll avoid, so like if I'm on like Instagram or TikTok or something, like I won't watch anything related to like my field. Right. Like I'll immediately skip it. But I'll, like, save it to watch for later because, like, I do want to, like, watch, like, homies work or just people that inspire me just so that I can kind of, like, see what they're doing and how their craft is developing. Um, But, like, something that took me a very long time was watching other people's content with, like, an intention or, for example, without trying to compare them or feel like I need to, like, go and replicate what they're doing yeah it's a very it's a very slippery slope yeah like i had to train myself almost to just be like wow like almost just pause for a second and be like i appreciate like all the work that went into this piece because i know how hard it was to pull that off and that's like so sick and like but but you gotta do that without going versus how did yeah, versus how did I, how did they do that? Like, I'm going to go shoot this and try and replicate it or be like, wow, like I'm never going to get there or like something like that. Like yeah. I've had, it's, it's, it's a really long process of like training yourself almost like as you're consuming content to think about it differently. Yeah. Uh, and just not have, it's a really, like you said, it's a slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's super, yeah, it's especially in this industry to just get FOMO out of watching someone else's work and you're like wow like mm-hmm. 
darn, I'm behind, like, darn, I'm not that good. And then, yeah, like, I, that's another thing that I think, like, just can, like, stagnate you and just, like, make you not mm-hmm. make anything. You're like, well, what do I want to work on? Like, well, like, there's all these things I don't know. And, like, um, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's, uh, I, that's, but that's like the mind of creatives. Yeah. It's this like constant battle of like, what do I consume? Why am I consuming it? Should I even be thinking about those things in the first place? Like, you know, it, it's, it's like, a, it's a weird place to be and it's like easy to get paralysis or just like, or work yourself into the ground and not take any time to appreciate like where you're at or what you're actually doing and things like that. I think, um, like, I always like to think that it's, it should be at least, I think, always about the beauty of it. It's never, mm. yeah, we make money, which is great. And obviously, like, getting paid to do this as a career is, I mean, the best thing ever. Like, I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. That's a whole separate conversation. We obviously know this. But um, yeah, just the fact of the matter is, is, like, I think at least – you should, in my opinion, want to do this stuff intrinsically. In other words, um, for example, I asked my, for example, I asked my friend, uh, musician friend, it's like, hey, would you do this if no one could ever hear your music? What if would you still make music if literally no one could ever hear it? And he's like, he thought about it for a second. He's like, yeah, like I, I definitely would. It's like, cool. That means you're an artist. If the answer is no, you're not really an artist. Because you're doing it for some other reason. You're doing it for like approval or money or something else, which again is fine. Like that's part of the human experience. Like that's part of the, we're, we're built, we're hardwired to like seek validation from the tribe. There's nothing wrong with that. But it should be like, I'd still do this if I couldn't post it. Um, because I yeah. think there's plenty of people out there who do this stuff and like, again, it's kind of toxic. Like you're thinking about the post while you make it. You're thinking about the post before you even decide what to make. And it's like, then, yeah. then it's, it's so influenced by it. It's just so, it's, it's your, you're taking away the whole reason you know that you started this in the beginning. You're making art that you don't wear, where you're not interested in what happens after you express yourself. Like, we create art to express ourselves. We don't create art to express ourselves so that other people will validate us. Like some people do, but then that goes back to your point. It's a it's spectrum like, okay, though. We really all do it to an extent. Art, it's, it's, it's not black and white. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, it, it definitely not black and white. And you definitely, I, I think it's almost borderline, especially in today's world, like unavoidable to a certain extent. Like, especially with your kind career. Of become yeah, yeah, you've become trained to uh, anticipate an outcome, for sure. But I think some of the greatest artists in the world do not, like, once they have gotten to a certain point where, like, whether that's notoriety or whatever, they kind of go back to, I'm just going to create whatever I want to create, and if you like it, great. If not, great. Mm. And this, this is this is another there's so many ways we could take this conversation because like well i just thought of like kanye and like it's like okay mm-hmm. like he gets himself to the point where he's like you know one of the greatest in my opinion to to do it and like then he starts dropping music that again totally just my opinion but mm-hmm. kind of sucks and it's like yeah is this like you really making what you want to make or are you actually just kind of getting lazy because you know that no matter what you make you're going to receive a lot of lot like a lot of praise on it because you're just famous mm-hmm. and it's like i don't know man like dark fantasy i think that's one of the best albums ever and then like like after life of pablo it's like everything after that's just like not the same standard to me and it's like see i have a i have a theory though i have a theory uh like I have a theory about like uh, for sp- specifically uh, like musical artists. Um, I don't think, and it's similar to uh, us visual creatives as well. I don't believe that you can continue to make the exact same stylistic music or visuals for your entire career. Some people quit while they're ahead, and they have like a big uh, library of cohesive work that kind of like stems from similar styles and and tastes and all that stuff. Uh, but, but from what I've kind of like noticed 
uh, with a lot of like bigger artists is once they've kind of hit like a like a peak in their career, they start to explore other avenues of their like art like of their artistry. And like the thing is is I feel like to be the best artist that you can be, you have to kind of explore multiple aspects of like what you're capable of. And if you choose to come back to your roots or your original, you know, kind of style or whatever, and then you kind of incorporate some of those new tastes that you've acquired through kind of that experimentation, then so be it. But let's say someone pivots and and they really enjoy uh, the new direction that they're going. Um, They have plenty of money. They have, you know, support systems, all that stuff. Like at that point, they don't even care if you like the music or not. So true, you know, like, but my, that, I, my that's thing like is, my, is like, that's like my take on it is like, they, they might just pivot and they're just, it's kind of just a fuck you to anyone that doesn't like it. And if you do like it, great. Like, and yeah, I like a lot of the OG fans are like, you know, a lot of people will be upset. Cause it's like, I like the old Kanye, like, <laughs> I like the like, old Kanye, you know, but, you know, but no, but I think it's like, I mean, this is, again, super, super uh, subjective topic here. I think there is such mm-hmm. thing as, like, good art and bad art. Like, like I do. Well, that's subjective. It is. It is art very, is subjective. Art is completely subjective. Subjective, but Whether or not you think it's good or bad is subjective. It is. <laughs> it is. But if you think about it, like, from the sense of, like, this is sort of what I mean. You think about it from the sense of, like... There is such thing as like being in the wrong key. Like I remember, like for, for in music, for example, like mm-hmm. like I used to dabble in like making beats, and like I would make like a beat, and then I'd send it to my brother. Like, what do you think? And he's actually a music producer, and he'd be like, "Oh, dude!" And then he would just move the thing down one note, so then the chord was correct, and then it would sound way better. And I'm like, "Oh, mm-hmm. like I literally just didn't know that." So like. I, I, I do think there is like, it's all about intentionality, right? If you can think something, yeah. this is what I'll say. If you can think of an idea okay. and then you have the, um, you have the, the tools that you need and the know how to use those tools. to then express the thing you're trying to do. Um, mm-hmm. that determines the quality of your art, not necessarily what it is. So for example, based on what you were saying, if I'm a musician and I want to pivot to a new style or like a completely new thing, fine, so be it. But like, are you able to deliver? Because if you're a rapper that tries to now to go and do like a country song or like a rock song or something, like, yeah, like you just might not know, like know the things that like, I just don't know how to make beats. Like I just, you know, and it's like, I can't sit here and argue like, yeah, like my, my off key, not produced, not mastered beat is better than like, you know, a Kanye beat, like, it's just not, and, like, and, again, all subjective, completely, like, you really can't say it's not, Mm -hmm. but, like, yeah, it's tough, like, everyone, everyone can listen to, like, the Beatles, and be, like, yeah, like, this tune is good, like, this is a good tune, it makes sense, like, there's a reason why they were big, you know, and it's, like, yeah, I think it all, I think, I think there's something there, I think there is, and same thing with, goes with any art, it's, like, is there sauce, like, were you able to sauce it up to the point where someone can go, ah, like I get, I really get it. Like, I really get what you're trying to go for here. Um, yeah. And I think it is a thing. Like, I think it's definitely a thing. Um, I see, I see what you're saying. You're, you're kind of, you're, uh, you're, to sum it up, it's kind of like, do they have that it factor? Yeah. Again, all subjective. It's really tough to like, yeah, have a conversation about this because it's like, you know, it, it, sometimes it's you fun to say, explore it. Though it is fun to explore it. Like it's like, hmm. Okay, all right. Let's say let's let's talk about this. So um, over the trip, I was talking to my guys about um, this Venn diagram. So there's this uh, photographer from Cleveland who like explained this to me, and I'm not sure if it was like his original idea uh, or if it was from something. I think it was his idea. And I really, really liked it. I, I was at his studio one time, it was a couple years ago, and I'm talking to him. Um, and he explains this like, uh, triple Venn diagram to me, right? So he has this Mm -hmm. photo book on his table there, coffee table. And he's like, what's the difference between you and me 
And, um, and this guy is pretty well established. Um, he's like, what's the difference between you and me and like this guy? I forget who the photo book was, but it's like some famous photographer. And he's like, okay, okay. there's three things you need. And if you have the overlap, like the, the triple Venn diagram, right? If you have the overlap, yep. you win. Or you, you're, you're at least in the drawing to win, right? You're at least, that is like, mm-hmm. these are the three ingredients you need to potentially bake a really good cake. If you don't have one of these, your cake's going to kind of suck, right? So here's, here's what the three are. The mm-hmm. first one is talent. Now, um, this to me is, I don't think there is innate talent, right? This is the nature versus nurture argument. I don't think there's innate talent. I think it's, it's like talent works like this. If I'm more talented than you, that means my practice gets deeper in than, than your practice. In other words, like if I practice for 10,000 hours and you practice for 10,000 hours, that practice meant more to me. But if you take a non-talented but practiced person versus a very talented um, you know, but not practice person. You get what I'm saying? Like if you need yeah. practice either way, like you, you have to still do the thing in order to get good. Nobody just comes out the womb, like as a, a sick photographer or something. No, but they're more, they're more inclined. They're more, to, they're like, more inclined. Maybe something that it's like something might come easier to them than it would for someone else who has to put in a little bit of extra effort in one way or another. Yes. Like, could I, here's how I'll put it. Like, could I be an NBA player? Um, technically yes, Sure. but is it probable? Definitely not. Whereas like a six foot seven dude who's been practicing all his life, that's just, he's just got the, he's more inclined. Um, but if I practice all my life and the six foot seven guy practiced zero, I would still be better. Um, so, so this is talent, right? Um, then you have technical knowledge. So another interesting one here, um, this is, so this is like the know-how. Yeah. It's like, but not the, not the know-how that like talent is right. Talent is like, uh, and talent and practice we'll say. So talent and practice I think is what gets you to where you can understand the craft and you know what you're trying to like do, right? Like, you know, like what you're trying to do. And then this, the technical knowledge is like how to actually do it. So it's like, do you know Blender? Like, do you know, um, you know, like you said, after effects, are you willing to learn? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to sit there and go through YouTube or go to college, um, potentially and like get that technical knowledge that you need? Um, and I, and I think this goes hand in hand with talent, right? It's like, you're going to practice if you have more technical knowledge and you'll get more technical knowledge, the more you practice. Um, all these things are overlapped, right? Okay. Yes. So third one I think is the most interesting one. And this one, and this is what he said again, I don't know if this is from somewhere or like he came up with this. Um, but I thought it was really interesting. The third one is having something to say. And I think that this is vital for art, not for, not for, you know, video production, not for like, I am a videographer, right? As a profession, but this is like, no, I'm an artist because I am actually trying to deliver a message. And this is where it's interesting because I think that this is the hardest one of the three because you can intentionally go and practice more. You can intentionally go and even if you're not talented, you can go practice even more than the talented guy. You can also and learn, and learn more technical skills and learn yeah. more technical skills. Exactly. So you can increase the other two based on your effort. But like having something to say is like, that's like your life experience. That's like your life. And it's like, yeah, I think you maybe develop those things as you go through life, but that's more of a crapshoot to me. And it's, it's, I think that that's like the vital thing when it comes down to like style, it's like, no one can teach this. It's like, what are you going to make now that you are talented and you know how to set up a lighting, you know, three point lighting? Yeah. Yeah. You need to have something to say. That's like artists are some of the most opinionated people in the world It's because they have a point of view and they find creative ways to express that point of view in a way that they see fit that may or may not connect with an- another group of people. Of course. And, um, so in the broadest terms to go, to continue what, like what this dude was saying is like, he then talked about, mm-hmm. um, the basically like what you get if you only have two of the things, right? So it's like, 
if you have technical knowledge, um, and if you have technical knowledge and you have talent, right? Um, these are like your like videographers. Like these are like your like wedding videographers or like um, I don't know, like just like stuff that doesn't have that much substance. Like you're that's like the stuff you're gonna go and make, and like you might go. Oh, hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta. Be careful, be careful calling out specific industries as not having like a certain level of depth because like, opinion. for example, I've seen some crazy wedding videos that are insanely like artistic. creative and like, and artistic. Yes. yes true. Yes. True. Yeah. So I mean, this is where, and this yeah, is where so again, like this yeah. is just like for sake of argument. Like I, and I understand what you're saying. Yeah, um, of course. Not to like call yeah. anybody out. Like someone's going to listen to this and be like, oh, this guy doesn't think wedding videos are artistic. Yeah, no, totally, this guy. totally could be, totally could be. But I'm saying <laughs> odds yeah, are, yeah. odds are, if you don't have something to say, you're going to find your niche somewhere where you don't really need something to say. And like, that's totally fine. There's nothing uh, wrong, there's nothing, okay, there's, I see what you're saying. There's nothing I wrong with that. Saying. Like you yeah. can, you can run a successful business. Then he says, no, yeah. then he says, what if you don't have any technical knowledge, right? Or like, that's your place where you're most lacking. These are your, so you have, you have something to say, you really have something you need to get off your chest <laughs> and you have the mm-hmm. talent, right? These are your starving yeah. artists. And I was like, damn, like that makes a lot of sense because like they oh, don't know how to like make an invoice. They maybe don't know how to like communicate. They maybe don't know how to like do the technical things, but you still figured out how to practice and like you're talented and like you made it work for you somehow. And like you have something to say. So like you're still making something sweet. But yeah, you yeah. don't, it's not technically sound and you don't have that, you, you, you don't have, again, maybe just it's the, I think business falls into that category too. Um, yeah, yeah. And so um, I forget what it is if you have something to say and technical knowledge, but no talent. I guess that's just like, you just that's need. Just, you don't get it. You just don't get it. <laughs> you just don't, yeah. Like, that, you you no, need no, to practice more. I'm dead, I'm, de- I'm dead serious that that, those are, there, there is a group of people out there that are in the industry that, like, they have all the best intentions. They, they do have, like, a very, uh, like, strong voice and they have all the technical skills, but there's something, like, you watch a video and you're like, it's like right there. It's like right there and you're not sure what's missing, but there's definitely something missing. Yeah. In my opinion, it's there's that's the area where it's like you don't have kind of the sauce for lack of a better words or like you don't have this like almost like you almost don't have like a you don't have a fleshed out style that you own to me that's to me that that's the third one though. separates yourself to me that's the third one because and i think what do you mean what's the third the 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 having, having something, something to say, say. But that's not that's not part of your style. It no, be, I think I think that like, is style. I think I think the the thing that I'm talking about missing is like talent. Like you don't have enough reps. Like you've got a message, you've got something to say, you might actually have a style, but like okay, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's not fleshed out enough. Yeah, like the like the like they okay, like let's say they do have a style, but the style is not polished. Right. That that's what I'm talking about. Right. It's like yeah. Like, like you don't, like you have all the puzzle pieces, but it's rough. It's like this rough, jagged looking puzzle and the pieces like are jammed together. Right. And then I think, yeah. I, and I think it's interesting though, cause it still it's like, makes an image, but like it still is there. Yeah. It, because it's technically but, sound because it's, it's technically sound. But something's missing. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a something missing where it's like, just doesn't quite feel like a full-on painting or like a yeah like yeah it's so it's so interesting talking about art and like what is art <laughs> it's very it's, difficult it's, to talk it's, it's about it's pretty crazy it's very yeah. difficult it to is talk about it is it's like... which is i which is also why i believe uh the vast majority of the world doesn't understand artists like we're some of the most i would say we're a very very widely misunderstood group of people like Look at look at the way uh, businesses try and work with creatives. That's a that's just a perfect example. Like corporate America trying to work with like a creative group of people is the most hilarious, painful, like like back and forth communication like that you've ever seen in your life. Because the artists are like, "Let me do me," and the business person is like, "Yeah, but I need to make money 
And if you do you in the wrong way, and they're like, what do you mean do it in the wrong way? It's art. I can do it any way I want. And they're like, yeah, but not for us. <laughs> right. And it's just like this, right. you know? Yeah, man. And I, and this is, I mean, dude, I could definitely speak on this too because, I mean, I I think I'm fortunate enough to be able to, to, to and you obviously are too because we're both clearly succeeding what we're, at what we're trying to do. You, you've got to be like, even if you consider yourself an artist, you've got to be a business person too. You've got to like drop your ego sometimes and just, just be like, com- like easy to work with, like easy to communicate with, like let it go, like do what the client wants. And I think that's so important um, as far as like, like running a business goes. Um, but yeah. again, like it's all, it's all like gray area because you can, as, as soon as you say, as soon as you start to say that, you could take that too far. And then all of a sudden now you're, yeah. now you're a grunt again. Now you're just a worker. Now you're a slave. Yeah. Like, uh, but like the other thing too, like who's to say you can't align yourself with like another partner or brand or like, like someone that you're working with that where your your artistic style matches their require like their business requirements. And this is you know the dream. I mean? and that's and this like is the, the dream. that's the beautiful yeah that's like the beautiful middle ground or whatever you want to call it. Um, and bro, I applaud yeah. you like of all people for like having that integrity and saying like no, I am not working on this. I am only going to work on this because you're looking at the overlap of like what you want to make versus what the client wants and saying, okay, I'm literally trying to just only focus in this category. So, you know, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> um, well, something we'll do it. Okay. So something I learned, uh, from one of my first ever like mentors, like really early in college, his name is Scotty Russell, uh, from like the perspective collective, uh, or like the side hustlers podcast, uh, now. Um, and he would always say like, put out, Like, you can create any work that you want, but put out the work that you want, put out the work that attracts the type of people you want to work with. Yeah, I'm not putting out my wedding videos. I have filmed weddings. No, exactly. (laughs) No, exactly. Yeah, no, literally. And, And like, that's like, I'm very thankful for just like hearing that piece of advice so early on because I don't think I've posted anything non music related since then like in 2000 that's like 2016 like right. so it's it's like i and it's the the thing that sucks is it's a very long journey to like get into a space where not only are you able to connect with people that are interested in your work but they also like appreciate you and respect you as an artist and want to work with you as a result of that it, that's a very long road and, and it's possible though that's the thing like people need to know it's, yeah it's definitely possible but but the but the the caveat is you have to stick with it you can't you can't quit after just two years of grinding like it doesn't work like that like i thought i could move to chicago and like in the middle of covid and in two years i could have enough money to go buy a house and move anywhere in the country like that was the plan <laughs> that was the plan it's like by only doing my art and not sacrificing like anything for corporate America or, or like, you know, working on a commercial or something like I thought that I could do that in that short period of time and not sacrifice finances and like, you know, like, uh, like my day to day, like way of living and all that stuff. And it's, it's just simply a much longer road. And this is where That's doing it, this but is- it is possible. It is possible, and this is where doing it intrinsically, like literally again, like we said before, like just doing it for you is going to get you to where you need to be. Like this is my entire thing. It's like just like literally just um, do – yeah, like I I just said, do – work with people. Yeah, like don't just make your art, but like ultimately like make your art. Like do it your way. And uh, Mm -hmm. I've always Mm -hmm. been that kid. Mm -hmm. I've always been like that like – adverse to authority like if someone as soon as someone tells me not to do something like that makes me want to do it more like i've always been that kid and like i've made a career out of it and now it's funny because like my mom is like okay yeah you were right like i let you do what you want as a kid and now here you are so it's like sick um but like the trade-off is like you have to work your ass off 
Um, but if it's something you want to work yeah. your ass off at, it doesn't really even feel like work. And like, it's always fun. Yeah. And it's like such a blessing to be able to like say that at, you know, 26. And, um, yeah. and yeah, like literally I just got off the phone with like a client earlier, like a big, um, potential, it's pretty, pretty much it's, I mean, nothing's locked in yet technically, but it's like, they're, they seem pretty interested and it's like a big thing. And it's like, I'm like, like the, the, the guy is literally telling me like, we want you for your style. Like we literally want it to just like do you do your thing for the most part. Like, yeah, we'll give you the direction you need, but like do it, do it, do your thing. And like, it's like, it's so sick hearing mm-hmm. that. It's just so cool. Like knowing that like yeah. a giant corporation is going to just trust you and be like, yeah, like we know that you understand this and we barely have to tell you anything. It, it's it's so yeah. cool. It's so cool. And it's so achievable that to is, get there. That is sick. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Let's go. Thank um, dude. This is a... Uh... Yeah, this is why I love these conversations. Yeah, man. I'm glad we're finally recording it. <laughs> I know. Finally. Finally, dude. Yeah, first of many, for sure. Yeah. Um, dang, dude. I'm trying to think. It's... I mean, it's always the dream to get paid for what you want to do. My one friend, uh, my my one friend said that it was like as soon as you start getting paid a lot for it, you wouldn't enjoy it anymore. And I'm like, I could see, and I could see mm. that. Like, but I think this goes into what we've been talking about here is like you still have to like be aware of like what you're like what you're doing. Like, don't if you don't want to shoot weddings, yeah. don't go shoot weddings, even if the bag is there. Yeah. Right. Right. Or if you're going to go shoot a wedding, have a means to an end. Yes. Use that money to create the art you want to create. Exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, to put yourself in a position to create like the art you want to create. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I uh, like uh, so I was recently on a podcast uh, with my buddy Sherm, Sherm in the booth. And we were talking about uh, a YouTube video that I'm working on right now where uh, it's kind of it's talking about like cost versus opportunity. In the beginning of your career, a lot of times you will sacrifice a lot of costs for the opportunities in order to like kind of like uh, expedite uh, your growth in a specific industry or your career direction. So uh, then, what after you get out of that beginner stage, a lot of times now it's a it's a harder question. Like, okay, is it do I take the lower rate to gain a step? in the direction I want to go, or do I purely say like no to that, a lower rate and try and find someone that's willing to pay higher because the opportunity is not there. That's the middle ground. That's how you like maintain status quo. Right. But then to get to that higher tier is someone or like a lot of the people that we are surrounded with now in the music industry where they come in, people want them specifically for their work and they get paid outrageous amounts of money just because it's them doing their work yep and but to get from that status quo to that like one percent or even half percent um is incredibly hard and it's always a question of like and cost cost is not only just like uh money it can also be your time and like your effort yeah so like It's kind of like, which one are you going to sacrifice? And it's always, okay, will this gig turn into something else? If not, it has to be worth it um, in terms of like financial gain. And you also have to look at financial gain versus how much time you're going to have to put in. A lot of like uh, on the the podcast, I literally said, if I'm going to shoot a show for free, I'm going to work 10 times harder shooting that show for free because I need that that cost that I spent in time to create to have an ROI in opportunity. Uh-huh. So that so you see what I'm saying? So uh like a lot of times people will say don't work for free or people will say you should work for free, but they don't talk about why or how you make that decision. 
Yeah, and this is like and this is super and that, interesting, yeah. super interesting. Like, mm-hmm. um, so I had a business partner uh, when I first started out, and like I owe a lot of my success mm-hmm. to him. And um, you know, we we're still good friends, like really great friends actually. And like um, you know, we still talk all the time, blah blah blah. And uh, we still work together here and there. But uh, the reason we don't like run a business together anymore is because like our values were totally different, and um, his value was like no like you do things like a business and like he wanted to make money like a business and like i was here i was like look i don't want to make websites i don't want to do um corporate photography i don't i don't i don't want to do everything like he wanted to be like a marketing agency like a one-stop shop marketing agency and like get retainer clients we're doing like an entire businesses like social media it's like i just want to make cool videos dude and like that's the thing it's like um Wait, I lost my train of thought. Uh, we're just talking about cost versus opportunity. Yes, uh, yes. At what so point he, in your career do you... So like, he yeah. said, he was always like, no, like, dude, don't do that for free, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, if I don't do it for free or for like much cheaper than we're advertising or like much cheaper than I've done in the past, I'm just not going to get the opportunity to do it. And if I don't get the opportunity to do it, then I'm not going to get the experience. I'm not going to get the the like potentially networking opportunities. I'm not going to get the art out of it, the portfolio piece. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's, you're still getting stuff out of something for free. And like debatably I've gotten more by, which is what you, I'm I totally agree with what you said. Like, Oh, I actually like, I'm going to work harder on the stuff for free. Like I've debatably gotten more. Um, I think by doing the things that I've done for for, like, just for myself than I have for like a lot of different Mm -hmm. client work that I've gotten paid a ton for. And you'll value you'll value your time or your cost more or less, or you'll value opportunity more or less based on where you are in your career and where you want to go. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. this is tricky. This is definitely tricky. Like we're speaking from experience of like, or from the standpoint of like, I mean, you have a fiance, but like neither of us have kids. Mm-hmm. Like we're both in our twenties. Um, mm-hmm. I got to figure out like, you know, this health insurance situation. Cause I just turned 26. Same. Same. <laughs> well, that's, we'll talk about that later, but, um, uninsured gang. Yeah. 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 Um, don't hurt us, please. Um, please. it's going to be really expensive, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, but, <laughs> but like, um, fuck, I lost my train of thought again. It's okay. Um, well, okay. I'll give you an example of my next cost versus opportunity, my really big cost versus opportunity decision. Yeah. Um, Please. So in from, I'm 26 right now. By the time I'm 30 to 35, somewhere in that five-year window, I want to transition to full, full-time directing. Mm. I, ha- I don't have, like, let's say at 26 right now, I do not really have a directing portfolio. I don't have enough pieces that I have solely directed that I could then leverage to get more directing work and like establish myself in the industry as like a, you know, a reputable uh, director in my, that's just like, in my opinion, in my head, that's like where I'm at right now. I am going to have to, at some point, shoot, direct and create entire projects for a financial loss yeah. to get myself into that place. I know that right now that I'm going to have to do that. Yeah. And I'm going to have to do like 10 of those projects. At least. Hopefully not. Yeah. If I if I can do like five that are absolute bangers, and like, like I said, I'm going to put my heart and soul, like I'm going to put in so much more effort into those projects than anything else that I'll be working on at that time. But it's because I want to be able to pivot and I want to be able to leverage that that cost that I spent in time and money to create future opportunity based on where I want to go with my career, which is full time directing at a certain point in time. So that's like to give you guys an example for anyone listening. That's like an example of like where I am right now in my career, where I want to go and what I have to sacrifice or like value more or less based on where I'm trying to go. Yeah, dude, that's really interesting. And I'm glad that like you have like that you are thinking about that. Like you're thinking about the direction that you want Mm -hmm. to like go in. And like, I think there's a lot of people, um, kind of including myself where it's like, dude, I really have no, 
I don't have any really idea. And like the reason I'm not That's like, not a bad thing though. It's not a bad thing. And I think the reason why, um, yeah. you know, personally, I'm not stressing over it right now is a, once again, cause we don't have kids. Uh, I don't have extra mouth to feed besides my own. I'm, I'm pretty low, mm-hmm. like I'm pretty low maintenance, like other low overhead. Yeah. Like I need to just eat, which I cook and then like pay rent. And like, other than that, I'm good. Like, I don't really need too much. Like, um, but like point being is like, um, I don't really think about this stuff because I think all of the stuff that I am working on is part of that like 10,000 hours. It's still reps. In other words, you might not be Mm -hmm. the director, right? You might not technically be, but how much experience are you getting direct, like directing based on the stuff you are, you are working on? And like the answer is a ton. Yeah. And like, that's like, that's like where it's like, I see, I see everything as just like part of the process. Like I was talking to my mom yeah. earlier and she's like, you know, it'd be nice if you got like some stuff that like wasn't music related. Like, you know, you've shot a lot of shows or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, first off, I've only started doing this this year, really, uh, for the past yeah. six, seven months. That's number one. Number two, I was like, look, if I could have it my way, I would do like the Cole Bennett thing. Like I would have big artists come mm. to me and be like, same as like, you know, the client I was talking about before comes to me and like, hey, dude, like, here's here's what we need done. For the most part, it's in yeah. your hands. Like you do it. And like, I would like a big artist that I like to come to me and be like, yo, Ben, um, so I got this song. Here it is. Tell me if you like it. What do you think we should do for the video? And I'd be like, yes, like that is the coolest. That would yeah. be the coolest thing in the world. Or also brands, I would say brands that I like. And it's like, hey, like, we've got the new AirPods that are coming out. Like, this is what the, this is what they do that's new. We got to advertise this. How should we do it? And like, yeah. that would be so sick. And I think like, this is what I said to my mom earlier. And I'll say this now again, is like, everything is just, it's all, it all can lead up to that point. You know, you'll, you'll, come to these crossroads in your path, I think, where it's like, okay, cool. Like, it's pretty clear which direction I should go here um, Mm -hmm. based on like where you ultimately want to go, um, which I think you do intrinsically know. Like, I I do intrinsically kind of know, even though I can't say it as clearly as you just said it, like, Mm -hmm. you know, and even that's still, that's still pretty broad. Directing's still super broad, so. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, like, I, obviously, like, in the music industry, because that's where I'll live and die. But, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> but, like, yeah, dude, like, no, I know what you're saying. Because at a certain point, sometimes the art just kind of just guides you. Like, mm. when you come out with something, a lot of times, like, uh, I've, I've always believed that once you once you put art, your art out into the world, it's no longer really yours. Right. People, people are kind of just, they're able to interpret it in ways that you didn't intend. They're able to interpret it in ways you did intend. They're able to uh, reframe it. They're able to, you know, use it as an example here or there, or they can nitpick something or not or whatever. Um, and that's like the beautiful thing about it, though. Like that, that is what is so awesome about art is like people get to kind of like uh, create in their minds what you thought you were trying to tell them and it's like so that when that happens it will point you in certain directions and and like your like your art kind of just like takes on a life of its own and like who knows like let's say let's say uh like something blows up for you ben and uh all of a sudden you are the guy in that industry now like let's say you do create like an airpods commercial and it goes viral because of like something you did or you know it just gained notoriety in a specific community now like you have a choice you can either you can either like fully lean into that and that door is open for you or you can be like you know what i really enjoyed that whole process but would i do it again no Mm-hmm. and then you choose a different door so it's kind of like this like it's like this opening and closing of doors based on uh kind of how the world or you know like communities interpret or like you know kind of consume uh your art yeah and and uh i think it's interesting like door the whole door thing what you just said like it's like bro if i was watching this like 
I got like even dude even like earlier this year that's what's crazy is like even like one year ago I was gonna say like three or four but like especially three or four but even like one year ago I'd be looking at these guys talking and be like what do you mean there's doors I don't know I don't see any doors I just see an empty room with walls and I'm trapped and like I don't know where to like like I think that there is yeah. so many people out there um and it's like what do like what do I do like and it's like you have to just trust that like once you just start like in my opinion my opinion like the best thing you could do and this is what differed from like my business partner is like it is not about quantity it is completely about quality and like if you can just get good you can literally just focus on getting good if you can live down bad do not worry about the money like the money is coming like i remember i remember sitting in my grandma's apartment uh, in Cleveland and I'm um, working on some like hood rap video for like one of my friends who thought he was going to be like this big rapper. This guy still does think this actually, which it's pretty cringy, um, but won't name any names. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm editing this video and I'm spending like days on it. And I mean, if I look back at it now, I'm like, yeah, like this for days of work, this is not good, but of course. But like my grandma's like, but where is the money? Like, she's old, you know, she doesn't understand. She's like, but mm. where is the money? Mm. And I'm like, I remember saying this. I'm like, the money's coming. Because it's like, you've got to trust the vision. Like, you've got to trust the fucking vision that you have. Yeah. That it's going to yeah. be good enough. Like, you're going to be there. And, like, I think the thing to do if you don't know what to do is just, like, trust the like the art of it and just make stuff. Like, that's – and put it out. Because yeah. the barrier to entry is not – hey, I need to get a TV ad for this. I need to get a billboard. I need to, like, th- like yeah, you can no. just, you can post. Like, you have a TikTok, you have an no. Instagram, you, you got are, YouTube. You're, yeah, you're one video away from changing your entire career, direction, trajectory, whatever it is. Like, and, like, that's why quality is so important. Yeah. I, like, uh, a lot of people, like Gary Vee and a lot of, like, social media gurus will say you need to flood the market. But the reality is, is, like they can flood the market at their point in time because they they've put they have so much time invested like they are putting out high quality content at high rates on every platform because they've been because they've been in it for so long like yeah. like they've they've they're seasoned they don't put out anything that's bad because they've they've already put in their 50,000 hours like they right. like, so well, and you like, just have so many resources. You, like it's like you're once you're established, yeah, it's like yeah. yeah, like if you can pay somebody yeah. to sit around and repurpose your content for all platforms, yeah. why wouldn't you do it? But in reality, like yeah, Gary Vee exactly. is like and this, again, same thing my 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 business partner would talk about. He's like, We're trying to be this like, you know, cool, new, trendy marketing agency in Cleveland, which Cleveland doesn't mm-hmm. have too many of those, and like in in my opinion, and um And he's like, look, if we're going to be this big marketing agency, we need to have the best content. And like, what would a good marketing agency have? Mm -hmm. We would have the best website. We'd have the best YouTube. We'd have the best Instagram. TikTok comes out. He's like, yo, Mm -hmm. why aren't we on TikTok? I'm like, and I'm like scrambling. I'm like, shit, you're right. Like, why aren't we doing all these things? And then you wind up just doing a whole lot of nothing because you're one person. A lot of mediocre. Yeah. Yeah. Now, okay. uh, This, but I want to clarify something for anyone listening that's like, especially starting out and they're like okay i'm just gonna spend 10 days on one video and it's like okay dangerous you also have to be self you have to be self-aware enough to know where you're at in your career when you're starting out volume is probably the better way to go right it's that it's that classic story where it's like uh the teacher tells two groups of classmates to go take photos uh one goes and takes they're like uh, the teacher says, one group, you can only take one photo, and your your entire grade for the semester is going to be great on the one photo. The other group, you guys have to take 100 photos and then pick your best photo out of the 100 to be, uh, like, graded on for that semester. Mm. And all of the best grades were from the group that took 100 photos. It's because they still – they needed reps. So that's just to say, like – just be self-aware enough to know where you're at. If you like always do your best on a video, but once it's done, put it out and move on. 
get the next one going. Like, yeah. like until you get to a point where you know the little tweaks that you're making are what's going to separate you from everyone else. If that, if the or, little or tweaks not, that you're like making you right like now, enough, like, like if you, yeah. it doesn't have to separate you necessarily. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, yeah. It's all subjective, but yeah. like, you know, you know, people know what you're saying. Yeah. But like at our, but like, let's say at our level right now is 1% differences. Yeah, 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 yeah. In everything. Right. Like, in every video, whatever it is, like, it is 1% differences. Like, whether we, like, for example, dude, like, I think us, like, for example, I hadn't really incorporated 3D assets that much into my work recently or at all in the past, really. Like, I worked inside of 3D spaces, but I didn't really, like, uh, incorporate th- real 3D files into real life, like, uh, scenes and all that stuff. But I think in that, in a recent project that you and I did together, that that, it felt so much high, so much more premium just because of that little, like, additive. Um, like, obviously, everything else has to be there. Yeah. Like, where it needs to be. But I, th- but it's like, just those little things. Like, Okay, yeah, I can put 3D assets in a 3D space, but can I make them look like they're actually a part of the scene? Can I color them? Can I make them look like the light in that scene is reacting to the object? Like, and and like we talked about before, is it even yeah. like cool? Like, oh, you put yeah, floating yeah. beach balls in this scene, but like, is it even cool in this instance? Like, is yeah. it your Does style? It? Yeah. 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 And yep. that's, that's yep. like, who's to say? Does it further the piece? Is it relevant to the piece? Is it relevant to the direction you want to go? Is it relevant to your story? Because, like, you can make cool shit, but if it's so irrelevant that you're confusing your audience, then you just put so much time and effort into this effect that did nothing for the viewer. You're an engineer. You're not an artist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at that point. At that point, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, man. It's uh, I think it's that's really an interesting thing to talk about, too. Like, I was talking to... Um, to one guy who was in Chicago and he like took down all of his like music stuff. Like he took down a lot of it. And it's like, I was like, yo, like you're like the best, like you're one of the best people I know in the city at this. Like how come you like took this all down? And like we were, we were talking about it. He's like, um, cause like, he's like, that stuff's cool. And um, you know, obviously like I, I get it and like I can do it and I'll still get work for all this stuff and I'll still do that work. But it's like, I'm not trying to be an engineer. I'm not trying to like, Mm -hmm. my brand is not like, like figuring out, like it just doesn't interest him. And this interests some people, of course, some people are the opposite. Mm -hmm. Some people it's like, yeah, I actually love figuring out like how to like model a shape. Like I was thinking, I was talking to somebody earlier. I'm like, part of me thinks I should learn Blender, like learn 3D modeling. And then the other part of me is like, wait a minute. I don't actually think that's, I don't think I'm interested. I don't think I'm interested in that. I'd rather just learn other things that I'm more interested in and like take those things further. And, um, that's what, yeah. you know, this person, not to name names, but like, that's like, that was his idea is like, look, I want to put out stuff. Um, now that he's established and this is, this is kind of important mm-hmm. too. It's like, it's a mm-hmm. business move to put out stuff that like you might not necessarily think is like the most, like that your, your artist mind doesn't really like the best. It's still like a tactical business move to be like, whatever, I'm just going to put this out because I know that it's going to have a certain effect on my career that I want it to. He's past that mm-hmm. point. He knows people and yeah. he gets work. So he's like, look, I'm going to take this stuff down. I'm going to put tripod videos with like a, an artsy narration because that's what he wants to do. And like, it still looks yeah. sweet. It's still great. I like, I like the work he's putting out recently. I forget what the point there was, but... No, it's just like, it's, it's once, like, it's kind of going back to when we talked about how, like, uh, musicians and artists uh, inside the music industry, they, once they've reached a a certain, you know, uh, point in their career, they want to start exploring different avenues because, uh, like, money and, and, you know, maybe notoriety or just, like, uh, connections and and their networks business. are fleshed out enough their businesses are established enough where it doesn't really matter and they can actually start to pursue things to the purest form of like it's it's they're 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 chasing chasing their passions in the purest way yeah. like they're it's based on like what they genuinely want to do what they're genuinely interested in I feel like even at our stage in our careers, 
at, well, yeah, of course, at our stage in our careers, like we don't like we could we could say that like our business, like, you know, that like every decision we make is like not grounded in some percentage of business, but that would be a lie. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Like because like we it, that is a part of like that is how we survive right now. But once you get to that certain level where you're not, it's not a survival necessity yeah. anymore. Like you, that now that does not guide decisions. It doesn't guide any aspect or percentage of your art at all. And you know, like going off of this, it's like I see people, and like if this is you, like I don't know, like think about, I guess think about this. Like I'm not judging, but I, in a, in a sense, I am because yeah. it's, it's you're you're shooting yourself in the foot by having like. You know how you go to somebody's Instagram sometimes and there's like, it says like filmmaker or photographer or something. It's like, okay, cool. But you have three posts and none of them are your work or like you have one ah. selfie and it's like, <laughs> dude, like, like, like I, if you've been doing That's the this, difference between a hobbyist and a professional. Well, but no, because like I know some people. So like, for example, I'm not going to name any names, but like I know okay. some people where it's like. Like, it seems like you're in this industry. It seems like you're full-time. Like, you have work. Um, you, you, you know what you're doing. You have professional equipment. And, like, mm -hmm. you're in the group text with all the other people who are in this big creatives group text. But it's like, bro, your page has, like, four things on it. And it's been, like, a year that I've known you now. And it's like, mm -hmm. I'd love to, like, be able to, like, recommend you to people. But guess what? When I send them the Instagram link and there's nothing there... They can't, you can't just be like, oh yeah, like I'm an artist, bro. Now with the person I was talking about initially, he could probably do that. Yeah. He could probably do that because he, he knows these people already. These people would know that he's established, like, like he could take stuff off his profile and it's going to be okay. But like, if you're not at that point, you really got to be like, wait, like, should I be that guy that's like trying to be all artsy with like one photo on your gram? It's like, no, like right. I do not give a shit about social media. Let it be known. <laughs> But like, dude, your Instagram is so important. Like, it's so important. Like, if you just have a good or you just need to have some body of work that someone else can reference and be like, oh, this guy is legit. This guy knows what he's talking about. I'm willing to spend my money with him. And that, like, that, him and that work should be on your yeah. Instagram. It should not be, I have to click to a website or something. It should just be like, hey... Yeah. It's your business card. Like you don't have to post a lot. You just have to have it there. And like, um, there's so many people I know, like whether it be musicians or, or obviously other video photo guys where it's like, dude, just like put stuff there. Like, like don't overthink it. Like you, you don't have to have the grid layout. Perfect. It, it's just that you can like, yeah. I can send someone else a link. Um, and this is so important because when I, so for example, I, I moved to Chicago, you know, a year ago and when I moved there, like I was trying to reach out to people via like LinkedIn, right? I was hitting up like business owners. I was hitting up like uh, production companies. Like I was doing all this like cold outreach and I was thinking about trying to go to like networking events and stuff. And um, this is like some sauce right here for people listening. The people you want to meet, like the, the people you really want to like meet and like become friends with and like get to know are other photographers and videographers. Number one above anything, because what's going to happen is they're just going to recommend you. They're just going to give you gigs. Like, like, if, especially if you're their friend, like obviously network with other people too, but like get tight in the community. Like, and if you have no community in your city or like your town or whatever, move to a bigger city where you can connect with people. Cause yeah. being from Cleveland, I knew yeah. like two other people haphazardly doing this stuff. Um, and then I moved to Chicago and instantly I have like 30 to 50 new people who I would actually call friends. And, mm -hmm. and we plug each other with work. There's a group chat. Like we literally, yeah. like it's, it's yeah. sweet. And, um, literally like, you know, you came over the one time and we're talking about X, Y, Z, big client, <laughs> um, or like production agency, mm -hmm. not, not trying to, I don't know if names are bad on a podcast. Yeah. I, 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 I want to even get past that, but for this time we won't name names. Yeah, but, probably should. Right. Yeah. But anyway, point being is like, we were both talking about them and then I figure, oh, like Colton will eventually put me onto them and then I put you onto them somehow. And like, it's like, yeah. And well, like, I guess I was like, I, I like laid it out for you. I was like, here's all the agencies. Like right. here's everyone in the space. Exactly. And then you're like, okay, 
this agency is gonna be here at this festival. Like Operation Outdo Them. Operation Outdo <laughs> Them, and it and it wound up working, and um, and it worked, and it worked, yeah. And so, um, but so, but then, but then, because of like, again, to, with, like going back to something we talked about earlier, like you reaching out to me uh, on Instagram, us becoming friends, and then within a year, now we're both working with them. It's like that's sweet yeah. like these that that's the so sort of sick. connections that you need to make and also bro like all mm-hmm. photographers are going to be like minded like every video photo guy i meet it's like it's like i immediately have a connection like you yeah. immediately have stuff to talk yeah. about with them yeah and, and i mean like yeah, i'll i'll second that like 90 percent referrals 95 percent referrals like that's that's how like uh, the network like your network will take care of you like your people that like you respect his artists and you know, as long as like they respect you and you respect them, like you're going to send work to each other, especially if it's relevant. Like uh, that's like the other thing too, is like what I found is like, I like I'm, I'm friends with a lot of people outside of music, uh, a lot of creatives outside of music, but like I, they can't, I can't really recommend them work and right. they can't recommend me for work. So it's like, and it's not like you should, pick your friends or your colleagues based on that but to a degree pretty important <laughs> well yeah and i i almost think you should like it's not that you're picking them because yeah. you're expecting to like use them it's that you're picking them because no of, because no, no, of no, similar no, of course, interests like and that's totally yes like, yeah no exactly exactly yeah. exactly yeah yeah that's why we clicked dude it was like 100%. i you were like i want to get into more music and i'm like great that's all i do <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> I was like, I'm Here buying this guy a latte. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got that shit for free, you motherfucker. <laughs> That's right. Shout out Doms. It's spending shit. If you want to meet some creatives, come to Doms. We all work out of Doms. <laughs> Doms in Chicago. The only Lincoln pro- Park. The only the only not sponsored. Not sponsored, but hopefully to be sponsored. That's the only name we've named so far is yeah. Shout Out Dom. Wow. Uh, a lot of people will say that like when you're developing your personal brand that you should have a, like a solidified stance on a number of topics because like you then you will att- attract a similar community of people that right. are like minded. Right. And I think this um, goes back. And to that the, makes um, your community stronger because they're connected through like a unified way of thinking. And this this literally goes back. So so let's let's end it here. Let's let's bring it back full circle because yeah. this goes back to okay. um, like I'll cut out the little part in the middle there. Um, this yeah. goes back to what we were like to, to be the beginning of the year when you were saying the same thing to me and you helped me come up with the whole do more with less thing because that is yeah. like what i like ultimately stand for like everything feeds back into this idea of like you don't need you can cut corners like you can cut corners you can cut a lot of corners and like it's the reason i love videos and photos because dude like i mean we're, we're shooting on vhs cams we got red cams but like hey let's yeah, shoot on the vhs because we want it to look like shit and like that's like the cool mm-hmm. thing it's like there's this isn't music where we talked about music before it's like this isn't music where you need to have it in the right key or it's literally just going to be worse no you can do it however you want and and this is what's so cool is literally now i'm shooting with a phone uh i'm not shooting everything with a phone i've shot a couple things but like i could shoot with this phone and it's a massive corner you're cutting but it's still you still have the ability to make it look more than usable and like um that's everything like that's that's why it's so fun uh that's like that's the fun of it it's like yeah. you're going deep not wide and um that's that's why yeah. we're here recording this podcast over facetime instead of in a studio yeah yeah you lose that, you dude. lose one percent quality a, but you, you lose ten percent quality but you gain so yeah. much more by just letting yourself do it yeah yeah uh, yeah it's all about taking action and just like putting it out there and and if people want to listen great if not great like the conversation like i will walk away from this conversation just as happy and and like like satisfied and and will still be thinking about these topics throughout the night like regardless or not someone else listens to it like that that's you know well that's, i that's thought you were going to say regardless of if not if it, if it was in a studio or not that too. No, that, that's <laughs> right. what I'm saying. Like, like if like someone like if someone wants to d- decide on what they're going to listen to based on the quality 
or what they're going to watch based on the quality, then like, that's like, I mean, they're, it's not like they're losing out on information that could help them. You're that like, people? It's just like, <laughs> no, there, there's a lot of people like, the, I mean, but that's the reality is like what the, the removing barriers to entry means that not only can you like create more, and, more and talk about more and express more and take more action, but if you then remove your barriers to like consuming uh, information and content and learning, that's like exactly what this is all about. Is literally right. like okay, maybe the audio is not the best. But you, but you're gonna get a lot out of this hour and a half, two hours that we like are talking, and like that's the only thing that matters. Right, right. It it doesn't really most most like people, you're. It's the same. It's the same information. Yeah. Whether it's in 4K, whether it's in whatever like bit rate or like or you know any of that stuff. Like whether it's a WAV case. file or an MP3, it doesn't even matter. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Same info. A hundred percent, and like, yeah. That's that's why it's sweet. Um, well, yeah, nice. let's let's end it there. That was that was sick, man. Uh, I appreciate you for being the first guest. Do more with less podcast. Yeah, Colton Backer, super let's fire go. editor. We're gonna plug the at and the website. Work to create. You want to plug? Want to plug anything? You want to plug anybody? Nah, dude. Just uh, just keep keep tabs on both of our YouTubes. Like we're we're here to help you guys. We're here to literally just like pave the way. We're like like Ben was saying, we're not here to be like gatekeepers. We're here to, to be anti gatekeepers. We're here to just all you know. All ships are gonna rise with the tide, man. Like let's, let's go. do it. Let's go. All right, that's it nice. for today. Thank you guys for watching. Do more with less. We'll talk to you guys soon.